Hello everybody, welcome to another twin motion tutorial. This is video number three, and today I'm gonna to speak to you about in twin motion uh, tools. So I'm just gonna go over the context panel that you have inside of twin motion. So not dealing with anything to do with Revit or bringing models in and rendering them, just going over some of the tools that actually exist inside the program. So we can get straight into it. Okay, so what I want to show you and speak to you about today is this panel right here called your context panel. Right, so in your context panel, it's very straightforward and there are four things that you can do. So we'll start with the first one, which is paths. So paths, as the name suggests, is kind of for movement. And if I click on paths, I've got four different items here that I can create. Character, vehicle, bicycle, as well as custom path. So I'll start with the character path and I'll just get a little bit close over here. So when you select these kinds of things, character path, also notice you've got this little section over here. This is kind of like your back button, you know, so you can go back to path, back to the context menu. Um, and you also notice that you don't really have any tools over here, but what you do have is a little pen that you can actually draw your path. And that's basically how simple it is in Twin Motion, which is really nice. So if I select on character path, I'll immediately get this little bubble and I can just start clicking in the, the this clicking the steps that I would like this path uh, to develop along. So I don't have to click and drag, it's just individual clicks. So click once, twice, and I can obviously move it wherever it is I want it to be. And when I'm done, I can press escape. Give it a couple seconds and it will load and it will start to produce content for you. And as you can see, immediately people just start walking along that path in kind of a randomized order. And as you can see down here at the bottom, we've got a lot of settings that are available to us now. So firstly, we've got what type of person do we want? Uh, we can take these on or off, or we can just leave the default, which is just everybody. Secondly, we've got a clothing option, which of course, as the name suggests, is just kind of what kind of items are they wearing, whether they're suits or a bit more casual. Uh, beach, for example, even more casual um, and yeah you can just kind of customize that a little bit next we've got width and width again as the name suggests is just the width of the path as you increase the width you'll also notice people start walking side by side rather than just one behind each other we have got a density setting which of course is the amount of people along that path so we can raise that or decrease that at any time We've got a reverse, which of course just reverses the direction that the people are actually walking in. And then finally, we've got a walk on or off here. So I can stop these people from actually walking so that they just kind of stand in one place and notice that they still actually do move, okay, but they're just idle. Um, so that's really helpful for rendering. Um, you know, if you always want kind of a, a shot that produces um, the same captured image rather than things slightly moving and each render looking a little bit different, uh, you can do this. All right, so I'm gonna just decrease this width a bit um, and just talk about these little bubbles over here. So the bubbles are always available to you and you can click and drag these around to reorient your path in any way that you want to. If you wanna add more control to your path, you've also got these little plus items that you can select and that will populate an additional bubble which of course you can move around as you need to. Okay, so if I deselect that and I want to select my path again, what I can do is just select any one of these bubbles and I get all of my settings down here back again. Um, alternatively, if I go over here to my object uh, tree, I can just click on character path and again, I can get all of my uh, settings back here again. Selecting character path like this um, also allows you to move the entire character path rather than clicking a bubble and only being allowed to move one bubble at a time. Okay, so I'm gonna delete that and go back to my context menu, back to paths. I'm not going to go over vehicle and bicycle path because they're identical to character path. They work exactly the same way. Okay, sort of same settings. You click, you draw your path and you can adjust density, speed and things like that. Custom path, I wanna quickly show you. Um, so I'm gonna select it. Again, I'm gonna draw just a random shape over here, press escape and the information will start developing. So what it starts with, as you can see, is just a little cube over here. Um, and this is really nice because I can kind of drop in my own elements into this custom path over here. 
So if I go to my object browser over here, I could even go to something like a chair. I can drag my chair into this little box area over here, drop it, and then my item will turn into a box. And I'll quickly go over some of these settings over here. So loop, as the name suggests, means that as it gets to the end, the item will simply start from the beginning again and continue to go. All right, so I've got uh, once, where it will just kind of flow once, ping pong, which means when it gets to the end of the path, it will go back in the sort of opposite direction. So it'll go up and then it will come down. Okay, or just normal loop or then looping with the ping pong. So you've got different options there that you can play around with. Then you've got the speed of the element itself. Okay, so you can adjust that as need be. And again, you've got your reverse option, which is just changing the direction that the item moves in, as well as a delay factor over here. So when it gets to the end of the path, how long do you want it to wait before it starts again? In this case, it defaults to one second. I've also got a rotation over here where I can rotate the item. Okay. And then I've got flow. Now flow is a really nice one because flow is what allows this object to turn with your path. If I turn that off, notice that my chair just stays in one orientation the entire time. But flow actually allows it to turn with the path itself. Okay, And you can apply any objects over here basically to this path. So this is a really nice, um, powerful one to use. And next we have vegetation paint. So vegetation paint is a great tool allowing us to quickly develop forests or just vegetation and um, a mass of trees very quickly. So as soon as I select it, you'll see that my trees objects develop here on the, on the left-hand side. Um, and I can drop in one, or I can drop in multiple into this little dock down here. So I just click and drag them down. And then I can select both of them, again, holding down control. And I can click on my little vegetation paint icon over here and I can literally click and hold and I can start to effectively draw the trees into my landscape. I've also got a little diameter option over here which increases the size of this bubble that you see. So if I increase it a lot, I can draw more trees even quicker. So when I'm happy with that, I can press escape and then I get access to these two settings. So density, again, as the name suggests, that just gives me uh, the amount of trees in that area. And then I've got a settings area over here where I can control the age of the tree, which is basically just the height of it. Uh, whether its growth is on or off, season, I can set it to summer, which it's green, uh, autumn is generally orange, and then winter is generally dead or snowy or white. And then I've got a wind setting here on or off as well. So kind of whether my leaves are going to you know, move or blow in the wind or not. If at any point I want to remove some of these trees, I've also got a vegetation eraser over here, which I can decrease the diameter a little bit and I can start to just erase some of the trees from my scene that I would not like to have. Okay, so I am going to delete that information very quickly and we'll move on to the next tool. The next tool is a new one, which is vegetation scatter, which is really really nice it's basically identical to vegetation paint but it's even faster and covers the entire area very quickly so if i click on vegetation scatter i'll be uh, presented with the same sort of menu i get my in this case grass and flowers but i can go back and i can go to trees and i've got my panel down here as well which i can drag and drop my trees into so again i can do one tree multiple trees it's up to me select all of them click on this little scatter add and then click on the ground and then just wait while twin motion does its thing and basically what it's going to do is it's going to scatter vegetation all around your project basically as far as the eye can see and it'll also scatter those three different types of trees that we've chosen now i could click right now again on the ground and it would add kind of another scatter of trees so it would create quite a lot of them and i can also move them away by clicking scatter remove and clicking on the ground and it will slowly but surely remove them in small increments. If I don't want to remove all of them but I simply want to erase some of them, I can select vegetation eraser and then again I can just draw or I can just kind of paint over the ones that I don't want so I can remove those from my scene. Okay, so I'm going to delete that one as well and we'll move on to the final tool which is called Urban. So Urban is an incredible tool for context. So when I select it, basically brings up uh, open street maps. 
that I believe is the service that it uses. Um, it's going to default to somewhere in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I think to Paris. So I'm just going to reassign my location over here down to Cape Town, South Africa, which is where I am at the moment. And I'm not going to pinpoint anywhere specific. I'm just going to go kind of to the city center somewhere right here. Okay, And I can select this little uh, zone to grab icon and I can just pull it around and I can identify um, a, a stretch of land or a certain position that I would like to bring in the context from. So let's say that it's right there. I can click this little grab on the right hand side over here. And then I'm gonna need to give it just a few seconds, or well, depending how large an area you obviously selected, how far you zoomed in, how far you zoomed out is gonna depend on how long this process takes. Um, I didn't bring in too much, so here we go, you can see just a couple of seconds, maybe about 20 or so, and I can see that it brings in basically polystyrene looking items into my project, which again, great for context. It brings in roads, it brings in buildings, and it will also bring in trees and vegetation if it can find them. And if I go to my uh, little object panel over here, and I go and I expand context, I've got it broken down into its three areas over here that you can see I've got roads and it actually gives you the names of the roads if it can find them, which is very impressive. Um, and if it can't, it will just simply say something like street. It does exactly the same thing with buildings. So it will actually identify a building's name. And I'm presuming that it grabs that from the Open OpenStreetMap service. I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay, and then we've got areas over here, which is kind of just uh, your, your, your ground, your little, your patch of grass. And if it had trees in there as well, I could have, um, there would be a little trees section here or a vegetation section with a row of trees that I could then um, replace, interact with. The nice thing about all these things is they're all separate components. And as you can see, I've actually got a height option so I could go and I could adjust this as much as I wanted to. And just using my normal tools as well, I could create uh, larger buildings if I needed to. Obviously it's all context, so it could just stay exactly like that. But I am free to sort of do, you know, whatever I want to do uh, with it. Okay, also assign materials. If I change it to apply to object, I can apply materials to one object rather than all of them. So it brings in a lot of information for you. Obviously, if you position yourself down at ground level for rendering purposes and you've got your house or project that you've designed over here, for example, and you position it correctly, it's just really nice to have those surroundings um, in place. So context, panel, very, very cool little area inside of Twinmotion. There's an awful lot that you can do with it. Um, and I'll be going over the other ones um, in upcoming videos as well. So there you go. I hope that that information was helpful and useful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to assist you. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.